welcome to Shell Point Today for Wednesday, September 7th. I'm Mary Kay Grimaldi. And I'm Rich Nation. On today's show, Terry Kolath will talk with Beth Crenshaw about her new title as Volunteer Manager. And Ruth Duber returns to her kitchen to show us how to make a delicious recipe that will fill your home with a sweet aroma. But first, don't forget about tomorrow's presentation in the Social Center with the Bailey Matthews National Shell Museum on Sanibel. Learn all about mollusks from a marine biologist during this one-hour program. You'll see live mollusks and other fascinating shells common to southwest Florida. Learn how they form, where they live, what they eat, and more. It's all happening right here at the Social Center at 2.15 p.m. on Thursday. And see, I didn't make any comments about the <laughs> shell this shells. time. Maybe I just did. Moving along, another exciting activity taking place tomorrow is the tea dance in the Grand Cypress Room. The Resident Dance Committee has been promoting social dancing at Shell Point since 2011. It's one of the many enjoyable activities available here that you can take part in. The early evening tea dance begins at 4 p.m. and tickets are available for just $5 each. You can get your tickets from any of the Resident Dance Committee members and their phone numbers are listed here on the screen. Beth Crenshaw has been promoted in her position in the Resident Life Department she is now your contact for all the volunteer activities here at Shell Point. To learn more, here's Terry Kolath, along with Beth Crenshaw, to talk about her new role. Hi, I'm Terry Kolath. I manage the Academy of Lifelong Learning. And up until now, I would say the manager of the Academy and the Auxiliary. But I have some good news for you. Today, I'm going to introduce you to someone you have known for a while at Shell Point. I'm going to introduce her in her new role, Beth Crenshaw, our volunteer coordinator has been promoted to be a volunteer manager in our resident life department. And we have thought how wonderful that we're going to have one person in, who is supporting all the volunteerism at Shell Point. And that's you, Beth. <laughs> Thanks, Terry. <laughs> I'm so glad it's you. I am too. I worked with the auxiliary for 16 years and I thought, I am so glad that when another person is going to come and be their direct support, it's someone like you. Thank you so much. I've really That's enjoyed so nice. getting to know you. And I thought if I could take a few minutes to let Shell Point get to know you a little bit better, how sure. nice that would be. Yeah. Well, when you took the volunteer coordinator role at Shell Point, you had come to us from the Legacy Foundation. Right. Were you surprised at the variety and the huge number of volunteers we have here? Extremely. Yeah, extremely surprised. And really... Um, I was in awe and, and amazed at the people, the volunteers, and how big their hearts are. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. And, and the opportunity you and I have uh, to grow with the most wonderful examples living here at Shell Point. It's true. It's true. Well, before, you had a life before Shell Point. And I thought it'd be nice to talk a little bit about that, starting with the love sure. of your life who's in first grade. My little boy, yeah, Gavin. Mm -hmm. He is six. He started first grade this year, and he is, he's, he's awesome. He never stops moving, so um, we have a lot of fun together. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the kind of, did, first of all, where did you grow up? I'm from Wisconsin. I grew up outside of Madison and uh, went to the University of Wisconsin-Madison for one year before I said, forget it, it's too cold. And, <laughs> and I moved to Fort Myers, Florida with a dog and a bicycle, and oh, that was really? about it. So, <laughs> so I, I think... Um, I think back, and, and I can't believe that I actually did it, but um, I guess that's what you do when you're young and naive. And, and brave and smart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so wonderful. Well, we're glad you landed here. Me too. What yeah. kind of work have you done? In the past, um, when I was in Fort Myers, I got involved with the health food industry. So I started uh, managing a health food store here in Fort Myers, mm -hmm. and that led me to a sales position. I was selling organic produce in the southeastern United States. And, and that was really, really fun. I traveled a lot, saw a lot of neat places, met a lot of interesting people. And yeah, and then that in turn made me move to Southeast Florida and I lived in Key Largo for three years. Um, and then I kind of changed careers at that time. Um, always interested, I've always been interested in health and fitness and I started managing the um, spa and fitness center at Chica Lodge in Isla Mirada. And yeah, it was a beautiful, oh, beautiful place. Yes. Um, really neat experience there. 
And from there, I then went up to the Ocean Reef Club in North Key Largo and managed their fitness department there. So that was me. Did you happen to know Mary Franklin? <laughs> Actually, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mary, Mary was a, um, our resort services manager for a while, and you worked with yeah, Mary. I did, yeah. Mary was my, my supervisor there, so I worked under Mary at Ocean Reef Club. and then, yeah, yours. yeah, and I worked with her just briefly when I came back here at Shell Point. So very nice. Well, I love sharing your manager, um, your background as a manager, managing mm -hmm. a variety of things, including your own schedule, selling and, yeah. and managing uh, places and people, because those manager skills are going to come in so handy when you're working with some of the most amazing people on the planet yes. who are running gift shops and running thrift shops and running auxiliaries and being able to support them and, and, yeah. and knowing what they're going through as managers themselves is going to be priceless for us. It's true. It's true. And just learning from, from these individuals as well, because yeah. a lot of them have spent their, their lives doing that and being mm -hmm. leaders out in the workforce. And um, so, yeah, it's been a really, really neat experience so far. Well, I'm so glad that you have gotten to know um, our larger and our smaller and our medium-sized volunteer groups mm -hmm. because we have the gamut here at Shell Point. Before you take on the auxiliary, which is, of course, our largest group, mm -hmm. um, uh, oftentimes 250 residents volunteering all at once in a yeah. very regulated skilled nursing facility. Yeah, it'll be it'll be different, uh, different. But I'm looking forward to learning so much about it. Yeah, oh, it's gonna be it's gonna be great. You're gonna have a wonderful time, and I'm looking forward to working with you on the transition. Me too. I'm happy that, that you're the one that can can show me the ropes because <laughs> oh. I know I have a lot to learn from you, Terry. It'll be fun. Yeah, and before long, you'll be bringing volunteer people onto the set and interviewing them and showing. Sharing with all of Shell Point the amazing things our auxiliary volunteer um, committee does too. Yeah, I'm excited. Good. Well, I hope you join me in waving to Beth Crenshaw when you go past her office in the Resident Activity Center. She's going to be a busy gal, and I am so glad she's here with our Pavilion Auxiliary. I'm Terry Kolath. It's Wednesday, which usually means that it's time for What's Cooking at Shell Point with Ruth Duber. So... Okay, it's time for What's Cooking at Shell Point with Ruth Duber. She has another great recipe for us today. Hi, I'm Ruth Duber, and this is What's Cooking at Shell Point, and you can see that I'm just getting started on a recipe here for franks and cheese. And we use the small can of the crescent rolls that just has the four in it. And I'm going to separate them without tearing them up too much. And there, we got two of them going, and here's another one. Now in this recipe, you can use low-fat hot dogs if you'd like. And you can use a low-fat cheese. Um, but for demonstration purposes, I've got Nathan's hot dogs, all beef hot dogs, which are gluten-free, by the way. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take some Grey Poupon mustard, and we spread some on each of the, the triangles here. Oops. I guess you could use any kind of mustard that you like. This happened to be what I had. Okay, so we'll set that aside. Now what we're going to do is layer some cheese. Now you can use any kind of cheese you want. The original recipe called for Swiss cheese. Um, I love Havarti, and so this happens to be a slice of the Havarti, and I'm going to put it on there. And you can also use cheddar cheese. So we'll do some with the cheddar on it. I think you could also use this for an hors d'oeuvre. You could cut the triangles in half and Cut your hot dogs in smaller pieces. 
And now we're going to add a little bit of a seasoned salt. But this is Mrs. Dash, so there is no salt in it. It's just mostly the spices. And so we'll just put a little bit on each one. I don't know that this is particularly necessary, but that's what they said. So that's the way we'll do it. And now for the doggies. And we'll put one and you start at the at the wider end. And now I'm going to get over here so that I can roll them better. And here we go with their little blankets. And you're going to put them to point side down. And you can use either parchment. This is uh, Reynolds nonstick, and I use this all the time. This is a little bit awkward, but it doesn't really make any difference if some cheese falls out or, or whatever, but you get them rolled up as good as you can. And put them about two inches apart. And we got one more here. There we go, we got them all bundled up. And you're going to put these in a 375 degree oven for about 15 minutes or until they're nicely brown. So here we go. And we'll set our timer for 15 minutes. And hit start and then we'll wait. Okay, that tells us they're ready. Ooh, now they're really hot when you take them out of the oven. So you wanna wait just a minute to take them up and put them on a plate. One on there. Oh, it looks really good. This is the one with the cheddar cheese, I think. So, I'm going to do this and put it in some ketchup. That'll also cool it off a little before I put it in my mouth. <laughs> That is perfect. You have enough of the flaky, flaky crust, and the cheese uh, just makes it a delicious, delicious dish. So I love it. We'll put it up on the website, and I'll see you next time. Thank you very much. Bye bye. And now it's time to cover all of today's happenings, academy news, menus, and village church connections. Hello, this is the happening segment of Shell Point TV. I'm Bev Chandley, and I'm going to tell you the activities offered for you here today at Shell Point. We're going to start with the men's Bible study in the Osprey Room, beginning at 745. And at 8 o'clock, the men's round robin tennis will be at the Woodlands. We also have the pickleball courts busy at 8 o'clock. And our Lily and Company jewelers will be here for their weekly jewelry service at 845. That's in the Resident Activity Center. At 845, the Resident Council will be meeting in the Social Center on the island. And Jurassi Travel will be here in the Egret Room at the Resident Activity Center at 9 o'clock. Also at 9 o'clock, the Watercolor Group with Phil Hilton will be down in the Art Studio. We are going to move on to 915, which brings us to the card making and scrapbooking group. They meet in the tarpon room down in the tunnel. The ladies Bible study group will be in the Osprey room at 10 o'clock. Also at 10 o'clock, we have the lunch at the Lashley Crab House. Court pickups begin on the island at 10 o'clock. 
1010 for the woodlands, and 1020 for Eagles Preserve and Estuary. And again at 10 o'clock, we have the men's match play tennis down at the woodlands. The model yacht sailing club will be at the Woodlands Commons Lake at 1015. And our final activity of the morning is a Health Connections class, Bar Ball Edition. That'll be in the health club at 1130. The afternoon begins at 1245 with a Health Connections class, Advanced Strength and Conditioning. That's in the health club on the island. Chess will be in the library lounge on the island at 1 o'clock. And we have a 145 Balance and Mobility Advanced in the Health Club. That's a Health Connections class. Jazz and Stuff will be in the Grand Cypress Room at the Woodlands at 2.30. And at 3 o'clock, we have Pilates Stretch. That's down in the Health Club. The Singles Table at the Crystal will be available at 5 o'clock. And at 5.45, the Church Choir will be meeting in the Village Church Choir Room. Our final activity of the day is Prayer and Praise. That'll be at the Village Church at 7.15. Hope you have a wonderful day, and we will see you back here again tomorrow. Menus for Wednesday. In the crystal room, the crystal platter is a breaded pork chop served with a scalloped apple and green beans. For dinner, they have their a la carte menu, and the soup of the day is chicken florentine. In the Island Cafe, the sandwich special is a BLT on white or wheat with a cup of soup for $7.95. Dinner specials in the Palm Grill are fried shrimp for $15.95 or steak Diane for $16.95. All menus are available 24 hours a day at www.shellpoint.net. Welcome to Village Church Connections. I'm David Pavey. Today's story is based on the writing of a celebrated pastor and author, Max Lucado. It goes like this. John Blanchard stood and straightened his army uniform and looked at his watch. It was 7 p.m., and he was at New York's Grand Central Station, on time to meet a woman whose face he had never seen, but whose heart he knew. It had been almost a year since he had first encountered the name Hollis Maynell. He had found a book in the library on a military base in Florida, where he was stationed. Although he was impressed with the book, he was even more impressed with the thoughts that were written in delicate feminine scrawl in the margins. He flipped back to see who had owned the book and who had written in it, and it was Hollis Maynell. He quickly set about the task of trying to get in touch with her, and soon he found out she lived in New York City. They began to correspond. But a few days later, he was sent overseas for duty. They corresponded for 12 months, and each letter was like a seed on receptive soil. Before too long, the two were in love. John Blanchard asked Hollis Maynell to send him a photograph, but she refused. She said, if you love me, it doesn't matter what I look like. Home now from deployment, John arranged for his initial meeting with Hollis at Grand Central Station at 7 p.m. on this very day. So here is John, standing, looking at his watch, remembering he had asked the question, if I don't know what you look like, how will I know who you are? Hollis had said, it will be the one wearing the rose on my lapel. Let me have John Blanchard tell you what happened. A young woman was coming toward me. Her beautiful figure was slender. Her blonde hair laid back in curls. Her eyes were as blue as flowers, and her lips and chin had a gentle firmness. In her pale green suit, she was like springtime come alive. I started towards her, entirely forgetting to notice that she was not wearing a rose. As I moved closer, a small provocative smile curved her lips. Going my way, soldier, she murmured. Almost uncontrollably, I made one step towards her, and then I noticed Hollis Maynell. She was standing almost directly behind the girl with the pale green suit, a woman well past 40 with a lived-in but kind face and low-heeled shoes. Her gray hair was tucked under a worn hat. 
She was not the type who would feel at home in Hollywood. The girl in the green suit was walking quickly away now, and I felt as though I was split in two. So keen was my desire to follow her, and yet I had a deep longing for the woman whose spirit had truly been my companion over the past year. And there she stood. Her lived-in face was gentle and sensible. Her grey eyes had a kind twinkle. I didn't hesitate. My fingers gripped the small, worn, blue copy of the book that was to identify me to her. This would not be love as I had thought, but it would be something precious, a, a friendship for which I must ever be grateful. So I squared my shoulders, saluted, and held out the book to the woman, even though all the while I choked back the bitterness of my disappointment. I'm Lieutenant John Blanchard, and you must be Miss Maynell. I'm so glad that you could meet me. May I take you to dinner? The woman's face broadened with a wide smile. I don't know what this is about, son, she replied. But the young lady in the green suit who just went by begged me to wear this rose on my coat, and she said if you were to ask me out to dinner, I should tell you that she is waiting for you in the restaurant across the street. She said this was some sort of test. You know, sometimes God does test us. We're put in a situation where there is a conflict between what we would like to do and what we ought to do. And strangely enough, when we pass the test by choosing to do what we ought to do, we find great satisfaction. The Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Corinth, I want to test the sincerity of your love by comparing it with the earnestness of others. He was collecting relief funds for the churches in Judea where there was a famine. The Corinthians had promised funding, but had as yet given in nothing, while the poor believers up north in Macedonia had given above and beyond what was expected. He continued, I'm testing your sincerity. I'm not trying to order you around against your will, but by bringing in the Macedonians' enthusiasm as a stimulus to your love, I'm hoping to bring out the best in you. So here's what I think, advised the Apostle. The best thing you can do right now is to finish what you started last year and not let those good intentions grow stale. Your heart's been in the right place all along. You've got what it takes to finish it up. So go to it. Perhaps you are in a situation today where you have good intentions. You promised God you would do this or that but you still haven't done it. Why not take a step today to pass the test of sincerity by taking action? John Maynard passed the test of sincerity and faithfulness by being willing to walk with a less attractive woman. In his case, it worked into a best-case scenario. And you know, when you pass the test of sincerity by taking action, it might work out into a best-case scenario for you too. So thank you for tuning in once again to Village Church Connections. Thanks for joining us for today's program. On tomorrow's show, we will learn about an academy class with the Legacy Foundation on the British exit or Brexit and why it matters to investors. Cheryl Cooper will talk about water and exercise and we'll hear about the final concert of the summer series with the Gulf Shore Trio. Until then, this has been Shell Point Today for Wednesday, September 7th. I'm Rich Nation. And I'm Mary Kay Grimaldi. We look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Bye, everyone. Bye.